All right, our next speaker is Ivan Fino. He's a law student at the University of Turin in Italy, and he's going to talk to us about a legal system to deal with Cosmigrossing, the Cosmigrossing era. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. And then I will present a new approach to solve the legal issues which space actors will face in the following years using civil law history. I would like to begin today by talking about a subject much discussed in recent times that the Earth will not be able to sustain human life forever because of different factors. Some scientists argue that the most likely could be the climate change caused by human impact. In short, the human era, namely Anthropocene, one day will end bringing in the Cosmic Rossini era. What is Cosmic Rossini? Cosmic Rossini is a word I created. There's two different meanings. One related to the Earth, when it will no longer sustain human life, and one sociology to indicate the condition of humans who will one day settle in outer space. The first part of my presentation, I'm going, I'm going to analyze the existing legal status of outer space, whilst in the second part, I propose a new international legal regime to both encourage the new space economy and international cooperation between developed and developing countries. Okay. The main legal basis of outer space is provided by Outer Space Treaty. It declares that outer space is considered res communis. In other words, it belongs to humanity. Article 1 focuses on the freedom for, freedom for everyone to use outer space resources. What does use mean? It means that anyone can extract outer space resources and have ownership over them. Article 2 declares that no portion of outer space may be appropriated. This is the non-appropriation principle that forbids property rights over any celestial body. So one could think that there is an inconsistency between the Article 1 and the Article 2, but this is not the case. Because Article 1 recognizes the ownership over the extracted resources, while the Article 2 forbids the appropriation of where the extraction takes place. Therefore, every company can extract resources, but it cannot claim any ownership over the site of extraction, where property rights, we just said, are not admitted. This interpretation of this two article is consistent with state practice. We remember that during the Apollo 12 mission, the United States claimed only the ownership over extracted resources and not over the moon. Is it clear? While the Outer Space Treaty was enough for past space activities, it's not clear or adequate for the future needs of the space economy. In this regard, I will make some concrete examples. If no one can claim the ownership over a land and everyone can, can take advantage from the same side, the situation can lead to the tragedy of the common era, theorized by the economist Mr. Harvey. He said that if many farmers use a common pasture to feed their cows for their own profit, they will all add other cows without taking care of the common ground. After many years, the pasture will be ruined or overgrazed. The same situation could happen on Mars or on asteroid. I will make another example to explain why the outer space, the outer space treaty is out of date. If a private company invests billions of dollars to discover and develop a mine, a mine or to terraform a planet, it cannot claim any ownership <coughs> over that land. Thus, the company could not deny the access and exploitation to other companies or states, which could legally take advantage of it without any participation in the initial financial investment. So, in the end, the first company we 
not be protected by international law because it will be shared. It has to share the financial investment with other companies. So someone could argue that outer space and these resources are infinite. So there will not be this progress. But one must consider that in the first decades, the number of profitable sites reachable by humans will be limited. And at the end, in any case, for a company, it will be easier taking advantage of an already developed site rather than discover and develop a new site. For this reason, I propose a new international regime based, based on a legal trust model that should legalize property rights and, lease, and leases over celestial bodies. Indeed, establishing property rules will incentivize private companies because they will ensure their investment. But the establishment of property rights needs to be supervised. Otherwise, outer space could turn into anarchy, whereby countries and companies would, would race to grab as many resources as possible, bringing considerable potential conflict. The anarchy in outer space can be avoided with international law through the United Nations. In particular, to set up the international trust regime, I propose to amend the Articles 1 and 2 of the Outer Space Treaty and create a second part of the Outer Space Treaty. The modified version is on the slide. In this new version of Article 1 and Article 2 of, and Article 2 of Outer Space Treaty, is expressly declared that companies can be entitled to property rights over celestial bodies under the, this new international legal trust model led by the United Nations. But do you know what is a trust? A trust model? I will explain briefly. A trust is a property arrangement that assigns assets to the trustee while establish, establishing the right to benefit to another entity. Every trust model has at least three components. A settler that sets up the legal requirements of a trust account and transfers control of the assets to a trustee. A trustee that administers the assets with loyalty, care, and diligence for the benefit of the beneficiary. And a beneficiary that is entitled to the asset's benefit. One simple I can make one simple and concrete example. A person interested in fu funding a child's education set up a trust accounting, appointing the trust to manage the assets and distribute the income to me, this code. Translated in a trust legal model, mankind will assume the role, the role of settler and beneficiary of the outer space resources. The United Nations will become trustee of outer space resources, grant the status of outer space as common heritage of mankind. Common heritage of mankind. It's an important concept is that outer space belongs to humanity. So the United Nations should manage the ordered and sustainable economic development in outer space for the present and future generations, which are the beneficiaries of this. Look at the mess we did in the oceans and, for example, for space debris. We need the United Nations to avoid the same <coughs> situation for the outer space. As we state, the United Nations will assume the role of trustee of outer space resources, leasing and selling them to companies and countries that satisfy some financial and technological requirements. This is a flexible system because private companies will be entitled of different types of exclusive rights over the celestial bodies, dependently of the nature of the, the, the body itself. Property rights are preferable to lease over asteroids as they could just disappear after the exploitation. Leases and property rights can be provided over lands and mining sites on Mars. Leases or the visible, visible rights are preferable for some land mass on Mars, which could be used by mankind pending a near disaster. In the case of lucrative activities such as mining, 
companies will choose whether to get the exclusive rights over their source through payment or the lease or through annual payment, payment linked to net proceeds or to production charge. How it works, this system? <clears throat> when a company so, is interested in leasing an outer space resource, before starting any operation, it will send a plan of work to the United Nations. The plan of work shall include all the details of the activity, such as the exploitation or the construction of, of a base, and it shall be consistent with all the legal requirements of sustainability and shall not interfere with other space activities. So, if UN approves the plan of work, the country of the company assumes the role of co trustee for that resource. Thus, as a co-trustee, countries must investigate whether all the activities of their national companies are consistent with the plan of work authorized by the United Nations. We must remember that states already bear international responsibility for all space objects that are launched within their territory. So, in this model, they will be charged with other uses duty of accountability. Companies, for sure, would prefer to deal with their own government administration rather than <coughs> with the UN. In this regard, the UN will be the main trustee, controlling and leading all the other co-trustees. This model will be the ordinary one. There will be also an extraordinary model in which the UN will be the only trustee. This model is possible in two instances. When the country of the applicant private company is not technologically able to act as a trustee, or when the applicant of the activity is a country itself. So at the end, when the applicant is a company, the country of the company will be the co-trustee of its national, while the UN will assume the role of supervisor. When the applicant is a nation, the trustee will be the UN. Thus, the UN, with its powers of trustee, will sell and lease celestial bodies resources to companies. But after this initial transaction, the UN will appoint the nation of the involved company as co-trustee to check if the plan of work is respected. The procedure will be the same for to buy an asteroid. This legal clear scenario for companies is convenient to get exclusive rights through land lease, land lease transaction and sales of asteroids. Compa companies could mining and take profit without any interference. As stated, as stated previously, the beneficiaries of this trust are the countries of the world and their citizens. Mankind can improve upgrade its existence, its existence by space exploration, gaining access to new technologies, resource and profit. This optimal situation could be developed within a clear legal framework led by the United Nations. All mankind will take concrete profits from leases, sale of, and sale of asteroids, and from benefit sharing. Moreover, humanity will receive the most important revenue, international peace, would be guaranteed, avoiding conflicts in outer space, as took place amongst European countries competing for world colonization. This model will be also accepted by all countries, both developed and developing. How will the income from the sales, rentals and benefit sharing can be, this can be distributed for, for the benefit of mankind? For example, the income could finance international global goals following a similar model of the 17 sustainable global goals adopted by the UN four years ago, which addressed poverty, inequality, peace, justice, environmental degradation. With this model, all countries of the, of the world will benefit from outer space benefit sharing. Another model, model we we'll use the income of benefit sharing to reduce extreme poverty in the world, distributing money, following different indices, for example, the 1.90 poverty line elaborated by the World Bank. So, the 
United States may propose to adopt this international trust model to promote investment in fields of outer space economy and ensure that outer space will never turn into anarchy, avoiding potential conflicts among countries for space colonization. In this regard, the US will follow the, proced the procedure provided by Article 15 of Outer Space Treaty, which declares that any state party can propose amendments. Any questions? So what if countries or other bodies uh, sign out this treatment and approach uh, acceptance of solutions? How are you going to enforce rules? Say somebody steals an asteroid, or there are two entities coming in to explore something. There are advantages in terms of energy and time to approach some bodies or use some resources. And somebody might disobey rules previously approved. How are you going to enforce? It is a smart question. So, but this model, I think, convenient for both, de both developing and developed nations because developing nation will take share benefit sharing from the outer space resources because when a company makes this quotation will pay benefit sharing or will pay for lease and for the sale of asteroid and will be convenient also especially maybe for developed nation because with clarity about property rights private companies will be sure to invest <coughs> and because with the actual legal framework if a company invests billions of dollars to develop or to terraforming a land <coughs> the investment will not be insured because anyone according to the Article 2 of the Outer Space Treaty, can take advantage from the same side that the first company has discovered and developed. With the, this model, with this trust model, there is clarity, there is a more clear situation about property rights by paying a little amount of sharing, sharing benefit sharing United Nations. So it is convenient for both developing and for especially United States or other space space faring nations. I think his question is the right one because you can't have law without enforcement because uh, the United <coughs> States routinely ignores international law. I mean you look at uh, the invasion of Iraq that was about as illegal as you could possibly get and so uh, it's a really good idea. I like what you're proposing, but the problem is how do you enforce what you're proposing? This is a problem of international law. It's not a problem of this model because if if the if country don't don't want to ratify, they will not be obliged binded by the convention. So this is the reason why. In this system, there are benefit sharing, and with benefit sharing, we can involve in this system also developing nations that normally will not let, will not, will not be interested in sign, in ratifying a, such a system that <coughs> only protect property rights. So this is convenient, especially think for United States, for example. Because with the actual legal system, if SpaceX go to an asteroid and make the exploitation and develop a mining facility, the investment will not be protected because anyone can, can go to the same resource, over the same resource, and, and make the exploitation of the same land or the same mining facility. All right, so I. I think I love this idea of a trustee model, but I think one of the areas where where you're getting where you, there's part of a problem here is it's still nation state centric. Right, the last time we attempted to amend a real UN treaty, right, UNCLOS, that's a 30 year process. 
right? So if we were to start doing it literally tomorrow, we're talking 2050, roughly, to get this amended, and by then, who knows what we'll do. So I'd perhaps propose something more along the lines of ICANN, than, right, the Internet Corporation assigning names of numbers, right, a, 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 a separate framework that's in a multi-stakeholder model. So instead of having just nation states involved, you're able to include the primary actors in outer space, right, private space corporations, space development corporations, and be more of an opt-in sort of system, right? Using the UN framework, I think, would create right, a lot of difficulty in getting people to buy in, especially because the primary actors, they're not nation states. Right? I, I, this trustee model, on the other hand, could well operate more like the World Trade Organization. And with people buying in, right, part of the, the franchise to buy in would, could essentially fund an enforcement mechanism. Right? You could end up with, <clears throat> God, I hate using the term, but a space force, but it would be right, an international, I hate that word, it space ends up being an international space, space core. Uh, core, right? The space cops, right, who would literally enforce the agreement that we had, that you make in this outside model, right? Working within the UN really kind of handcuffs you. But the trustee model, I think, like, you are really much getting to the core, right? We need something to... Right. We need some sort of common institution in order to allow for property rights in outer space to allow for a much more peaceful development. First reason, this model is better than the UNCLOS provided by Montego Bay Convention of 1982 mm -hmm. because it recognizes private property rights. Mm -hmm. The UNCLOS does not, first of all. The UNCLOS also provides for UN for, like as a main manager of the resource. This is different because the UN just approved the plan of work of the company and later the co-trustee for that resource will be the nation of the companies that make the exploitation. So the nation, for example the United States, will check and control the activity of its own national company. So it's different, a different model. I think it's less centralized, it's less. That's what you're saying. Just for clarification, is the, uh, the UN Sustainable Economic Development Declaration that you mentioned, would that be the main uh, system of values and uh, ethics? I mean, the reason why mostly of countries didn't ratify the Moon Agreement that has been proposed in 1979 is that, that developed nations didn't want to give sharing benefit, benefit sharing to developing countries that didn't invest anything. With this model, giving financing, financing the 17, the 17 goals of UN, we can give money not only to developing nations, to every country to get these goals. So it's convenient not just for developing nations, but also for US, because the 17 goals are also for are provided also for US, for example, to deal with the poverty or difference between genders, inequality between the genders. So it's convenient for all the countries, not only for oh, thank you. Um, so I just follow on from the uh, questions beforehand about enforcement. Um, have you considered the liability convention as being a possible means of ensuring enforcement? Yeah. The liability convention? Ah, uh, liability convention? 1972? Yes. It is just for damage that uh, <laughs> companies can, like, if SpaceX go to Mars or go to the moon, er, and during this, this trip to Mars, <coughs> something happened, and for example, it damaged the spacecraft of SpaceX for example, can damage a structure or a city of China. If SpaceX don't pay 
for this damage, US will pay. So in this model that I propose, the duty that already exists over the state to supervise the conduct of their citizens are added to other duties to check if the plan of work of the companies are consistent with the initial contract that has been done with the United Nations. You have one more question? Uh, yeah, I was, I was curious. Um, I, I like a lot of the things about your model. The, it does occur to me that the trustee is not necessarily um, as, um, as, widely, as um, good a one as it might be. I mean, I think you'd have to reform the UN quite seriously before you gave it control of that much money. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, you could have some pretty big problems, don't you think? I, I mean, I, at least some democratic reform or something to have some control over it. For this reason, I provided various bodies in the UN. I, wa I want to just to simplify the model and say the UN, but I, this model Understood. that I provided that I made <coughs> my university for my thesis graduation. I provided also a council that is it the uh, executive, 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 ex executive, executive organ that will approve plan of words, check out the correct functioning of the system and the contrast conduct. So it's not just the UN. There will be other bodies that you know so that will perform secretariat functions. Thank you. I have a few more.